All right, well, greetings from California. Uh, the data from this work is from MLB and from Baseball Savant. And I'd like to thank Travis Peterson and Tom Tango from MLB uh, for their help with this project. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a review. Uh, batted ball outcomes depend on a number of variables <clears throat> that are beyond the control of the batter and the pitcher, uh, things like the defense, the ball, and because of these things, statistics that depend on batted ball outcomes, batting average, have a lower reliability than other statistics that don't depend on. And this makes the prediction of future performance on batted balls for batters and pitchers a difficult task. One of the things that we've learned is that we can increase the reliability of batted ball statistics by using sensor data. So for each batted ball, we get the vertical longitude, the horizontal spring angle H, and the batted ball exit speed uh, S. And we can combine these into all values. So we have a Bayesian method that computes the posterior probability of <clears throat> each possible function of the batted ball vector x, just a vector of uh, the speed, the uh, two angles. Then we can take different linear combinations probabilities and get various statistics. The so linear combinations D, um, we change the weights, we can get batting average, uh, slugging, and WOBA, for example. So here we have uh, these probabilities for a line drive to the outfield uh, this is exit speed of uh, 97, vertical angle of uh, 12 degrees. And we're plotting with uh, horizontal angle H down here. The left end of the plot is the third baseline, and then the right end of the plot is the first baseline. So we can look at, for example, the red curve is the probability of a double. And we see that we get the highest probabilities of a double for balls uh, that are down the line or for balls that are between the outfielders. And then the probability of the sorry, yes. sorry to interrupt there, Glenn. Uh, your slides are not uh, advancing as you, uh, as you speak here. Oh, I'm sorry. They're advancing on my computer. Uh, so you're not seeing one with event probability no, on we're it? Still, we're still on your first slide here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, I think it works best in slideshow mode, if you, would, if you would go to that for us, please. Yeah, I am in slideshow mode. Mm. Well, you have my slides there, right? You have my PowerPoint file, I think. Uh, so now we're seeing event probability. Okay. Um, is it in? Is it big enough? You can see it. Yeah. Okay. I. Uh, it's small on my computer, but I can work from. Um. So we're good. Yeah, I think we'll see. Okay. All right, let me go ahead one just for, for fun here. Yeah, and I, and I think it, the, the more consistently you can keep, uh, stay close to your microphone, uh, the sound kind of cuts in and out as well. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Is that a little better? Yes. All right, so um, you want me to start over or I can just go from here? I think from here is good. Okay, all right, so we've got then the... Uh, this is a line drive to the outfield from a right-handed batter. And we're plotting here the probability of each of the different events as a function of the, the horizontal angle. Again, we've got a third baseline on the left end of the plot, and we've got first baseline on the right end of the plot. And the red curve was probability of doubles. So we see that's maximum uh, for balls down the line, uh, left field line, right field line, and between the outfielders. And then the probability of outs is this black curve um, here. Now, those are for balls hit directly at the outfielders. And then uh, singles kind of go inverse to the, the probability of the doubles. And there's a very small probability of a, of a triple for this particular uh, ball. And we can compute from these uh, various statistics, um, batting average slugging percentage, WOBA. So we see that the 
uh, blue curve, the slug is the highest, and then the batting average and the WOBA cross over each other. Curves. Uh, the technical method that we're using is a non parametric machine learning technique called that it has data. And that's what we use to compute the conditional densities in uh, rule. And the important point here is that this generalizes uh, easily to higher later. Um, we have this smoothing vector that gets estimated. Given this, we are going to use WOBA as our statistic because that has the highest correlation to run value. So we can take the batted ball parameters, the vector SVH, and we can plot that as a point in a 3D space or an X cube. And when we go to that point, the method will tell us the uh, WOBA for that particular point. And if we want to look at what this cube uh, does, we can take various slices uh, through the cube. So I'm going to show you a, a few of those. Uh, this is the slice for uh, 93 miles an hour. And the color is the OBA. And then uh, we've got horizontal angle. Take a slice through the bottom, horizontal slice through the bottom. We see we get the four uh, cold zones corresponding to the third baseman, shortstop, second baseman, first baseman. We take a slice through the middle here. We get cold zones for the left fielder. Uh, center fielder, right fielder, and then we can see, uh, per se, balls down the line at a higher vertical angle. These are the home runs to left, home runs to right, and then uh, if you hit the same batted ball to center field, uh, that tends to be an out. And we can take some other slices. Uh, these are two different um, exit speeds for a ground ball with a vertical angle of uh, minus two, plotted again as a function of the uh, horizontal angle. We see we get four minima um, corresponding again to the positions of the four infielders. And for the red ball that gets hit harder, you see that the batter's results. And this next one is for a ball in the air at a vertical angle of plus uh, 15. Again, we've got two different speeds. And in this case, the batter tends to get a worse result when he hits it harder. It uh, tends to carry to the um, outfielder. And again, the three minima in these curves are the left fielder, center fielder, and the right fielder. And we actually generate two WOBA cubes. We generate one for uh, left-handed batters. This plot here um, is what we get for the, the two different uh, types of batters as a function of horizontal angle for the ground ball. And we see the minima are shifted about uh, seven degrees to the left. Positioning. And this is the same idea for the ball in the air. And we see here that we're shifted about three degrees uh, to the left. So these are some of the slices we can look at through the Woba cube. All right, so you can ask what good is all this besides keeping me entertained? And what we can do here is we can compute averages of the statistics that we get from the intrinsic values. So we're going to define I as just the average time of a batter's Woba cube values. And then for comparison, we're going to define a statistic O, which is the player's actual observed um, WOBA on contact. So I doesn't depend on the particular outcomes. O um, is defined by the particular outcomes. And one way we can evaluate these statistics is by computing the reliability. So here we're using the Cronbach's alpha estimate of reliability. Um, N is the number of batted balls on the, the horizontal axis. And the black curve is the intrinsic statistic and the uh, red curve is the observed statistic. And we see that we get a much higher reliability for the intrinsic uh, batted ball. And let me show you an example of what reliability um, is. So it's derived from measurements of split half correlations for the data. So another way to look at this is the scatter plot. 
And what we've done here is we've taken a set of batters, 400 batted balls for a season, and we divide them into 200 even and 200 odd batted balls. Hit. And then each point on the scatter plot is a particular batter. And we're just looking at how the um, one half correlates with the other half. So if this statistic was perfectly reliable, then we would expect to see all the points lie on a line um, with a slope of one. Uh, you can see they don't. And again, this is for the observed uh, WOBA on contact. We get a correlation there of about 0.32. And if we take the intrinsic statistic for the same batted balls in this scatter plot, we see that the distribution is uh, much tighter. We get a much higher um, correlation here of 0.63. And then people are, people are often interested in talking about the point where the reliability crosses over one half. Point at which the uh, statistic stabilizes. Okay, so it's not like anything magic. And it's important because it's related to how much regression we have to apply. forward. But we see that the crossover point comes a lot sooner for both batters and pitchers for the intrinsic statistic than for the observed statistic. Um, we also see that it takes a lot more batted balls for us to get to 0.5 for the pitchers, which is pretty well known. Um, McCracken had assumed that pitchers had no control over uh, batted balls, but we see there's some, but it takes a long, long time to, to get there. Uh, from the reliability, we can um, get out the true talent standard deviation for the intrinsic quality of contact. So for batters, it's uh, 35 WOBA points. And for pitchers, it's about two and a half times smaller at 14 WOBA points. So you can get it for pitchers, but it is, um, it is quite small. Now, as I'd mentioned, we can generalize this method to higher dimensions. So we can do the same thing for pitches know that a pitcher can throw a great pitch and get a bad result. And get a, get a good result. So we can maybe quantify pitcher performance better by using sensor measurements. And for a pitch, there's a few more. Um, we have got to go to five measurements, the speed, the horizontal and vertical movement, and the horizontal and vertical uh, components of the location. Um, in addition, the value of a pitch depends on the count and it depends on the handedness of the batter and the pitcher. But we can use the same kind of an approach and we can take slices through the space. So this is just an example. Value for an OO count. And parameters are typically uh, what we would see for a four seam fastball. And the slice we're taking is just for the location from the uh, catcher's perspective. And big values are good for uh, the batter, and small values are good for the pitcher. So you see the best here uh, for the pitch is down and away from the right-handed batter. And then just another example, this is for a pitch that's typically change-up, um, right-handed pitcher, left-handed batter. And we see here that you really don't want to throw this over the middle of the plate, and the best location is down and away. And we can take other kinds of slices through the, the pitch space. Uh, here we're fixing everything except the horizontal and the vertical movement. And we see the yellow here that there's a band of combinations of horizontal and vertical movement that you really want to. So this is a type thing that's useful uh, for pitcher development or for uh, pitch design. And we can look at the reliability just like we did for balls. And we see that the intrinsic Pitch statistic. Um, this was um, number of pitches is is on the the horizontal axis. There. Uh, we see much higher for the intrinsic than for the observed. For the red curve, um, observed pitch values. Those would be the the things that you would find. And graphs, and you see that they have a very low uh, degree of repeatability. And we've got. Uh, doesn't want to advance. There we go. 
Uh, so this is another configuration. And we see that we get the same type of a result. We get a much higher reliability for the intrinsic pitch statistic than for the observed pitch statistic. And then we've got a paper, if you want to look at more of these various reliability. Okay, so in summary, uh, the intrinsic batted ball and pitch values have a higher reliability and higher predictive value than um, other statistics. There's a couple of journal papers here if you want to um, read more details or see more results. Um, if you don't want to read papers, the driveline guy video where they talk about these um, intrinsic values. Video. Now, we, we first did this for uh, batted balls and for pitches back in 2014, based on 2014 data before we even had that cast. So this was using it affects. And one of the things we noticed that uh, for the batters, the guys that tended to get better results than they would have deserved just based on their um, intrinsic quality of contact were guys that tended to be faster uh, runners. So here you see at the top of the list, we've got Starling Marte, who's pretty fast. He led the league that year um, with 14 reach on airs which is often correlated with, with being a fast runner. We see we've got guys like Billy Hamilton and Lorenzo Kane on the list. Uh, guys like Jose Abreu are not very fast, but it turns out he had a lot of um, just enough home runs that year. Uh, there was even an article in the Wall Street Journal that had a title, Jose Abreu, champion of the cheap home run. That's, that's how he got to be uh, second on this list. And then, um, if we look at the guys with the lowest O minus I difference, guys that tended to underperform the most of just their quality of contact on their batted balls, uh, you see these are guys who are the slower runners. So we thought, well, we could maybe do better with this if we could bring in some of the, uh, the running speed, but back in for the 2014 data, we didn't have that. But now we do. So with StatCast, there's a couple measures of the batter's running speed. There's the sprint speed, which is the batter's um, one second window. And there's also the time to first, which is the time from batted ball contact to the batter uh, touching first base. So we felt that was more appropriate if we're trying to model what happens on batted balls because the time to first um, incorporates the time to recover from the swing and the time uh, for the batter to start the acceleration to first. Um, we also know that batters are not always running as hard as they can down to first base. If they hit a, a pop-up on the infield, they're probably not sprinting to first. So we define a speed parameter, and we'll, we'll call it R, is the average of a batter's three fastest times to first um, over the season. And we're doing this for 2018. And you can see here, um, we've got these uh, times to first, and R parameters for left and right-handed batters, as we'd expect, R is smaller uh, than the average of the, the average of R is smaller than the average of time to first. And left-handed batters get to first faster than right-handed batters because they start closer. And these are the uh, speed leaders for 2018. So these are from the list. And again, we see that the speed for the left-handed batters getting to first is quicker than um, for the fast right-handed batters. So the first thing we did was we looked at ground balls. We looked at all batted balls with a vertical angle of less than 10 degrees, and we're just plotting the OBA as a function of this R speed parameter, and we split it up for left-handed batters and for right-handed batters. And we see that the curves are, as we would expect, decreasing as the batter gets slower, as his time to first increases. And we also see that right-handed batters tend to have a higher WOBA for the same uh, time to first than the left-handed batters. And that's because the right-handed batters hit more of their ground balls to the left side, where the throw to first is longer than it is for uh, ground balls hit to the right side. So we saw this plot and we figured, okay, it looks like we can, can do something with this data. So we define 
uh, what we call the Woba Tesseract. So if you go up a dimension from a cube to four dimensions, that's called a, a Tesseract. And the here is what a Tesseract looks like if you project it uh, into a plane. And so we're, we're now modeling Woba as a function of four variables, okay, the three batted ball parameters, um, SVH, and the uh, time to first um, R parameter. And for future reference, we're going to use um, I3 is going to refer to the average of a player's Woba cube values, just using the batted ball parameters. I4 is going to be the average of the Tesseract values, which also incorporates the fourth variable, which is the running speed R. Okay, so we can take slices through the Woba Tesseract, like we did for the Woba cube. So this first example is a exit speed of 87 miles an hour, ground ball, um, vertical angle of minus nine degrees, right-handed batter. And we've got two different um, R speed parameters. The red curve is four seconds, which is somewhat better than average. And then the black curve is 4.4 seconds, which is uh, somewhat worse than average. And we see that, as we might expect, the faster runner usually does better. Um, we also, you see, of course, the four minima corresponding to the positions of the, the four infielders. And we also see that the curves um, come together at the minima here. So that tells us that if a ball's hit directly at an infielder, the speed doesn't, the batter's running speed doesn't really help much, but it tends to help more as the batted ball forces the, the infielder to, to range. And the biggest values here are down the uh, first baseline, horizontal angle around 40 degrees. And that's because this angle is often undefended against right-handed batters, and these balls can also often go uh, for doubles. So we've got another slice here. And this is for a left-handed batter, uh, a speed of 97 miles an hour and a vertical angle of and we see the minima for the left-handed batter shifted a little bit uh, to the right. And we see that the uh, minima for the balls hit at the infielders are almost the same, except for uh, the third baseman over here. And the reason for that is the third baseman has to come in uh, to respect the bunt a little bit more for the faster runner. So this batted ball hit at 97 miles an hour has a better chance of resulting in the uh, batter reaching um, for the balls uh, in the direction of the, the third baseman. And we see the biggest values here for balls uh, down the uh, third baseline, which are often undefended against the left-handed batter. Okay, so we can look at some tables. Uh, these are the, that's showing up weird, um, but these are the I3 leaders for uh, 2018. So this is just based on the quality of, of contact, uh, the Woba cube values, and these are probably not surprising. These are guys that tend to hit the ball uh, pretty well. And then this next chart is the I4 leaders. So now we're incorporating the running speed, and we see we get a couple new guys that move on to the leaderboard, uh, Trevor Story and Mookie Betts. Better than average uh, speed first that uh, some of the slower guys move down when we compare the I-4 to the I-3. Uh, guys like Gallo, Martinez, Judge, and Goldschmidt. Uh, we can also look here at the highest values of um, I-4 minus I-3. So the guys that we would expect to do the most better based on their running speed, on their, also on their collection of uh, batted balls. So we see here that uh, Cody Bellinger's at the top of the list. He gets about a 25 uh, Woba point gain over um, average. Uh, if you see two values for R, that's uh, switch hitters. So they have a value of R uh, getting to first from both the left side and from uh, the right side. And all, all the guys here have better than average uh, running speed first. And then we've got The, the lowest um, I-4 minus I-3. So these are the guys that you would expect to lose the most because of their 
calls. And we've got Mike Rondell at the top, and you see guys who's um, around 35. And here we've got the guys with the um, highest actual observed Wobicon uh, compared to the Woba cube values. Uh, and these are guys that can benefit, um, that are benefiting both from their running speed R, and there can be other factors too. We notice uh, Carlo, Carlos Gonzalez and Trevor Story are on the list, and they both benefit from playing uh, that year in Colorado. You see all these guys um, are faster um, than average um, as well. We also see that the size of O minus I4, the Tesseract values, are more accurate than just the Woba cube values in every case, uh, the O minus I3. And then the next plot here is the guys with the lowest um, O minus I3. So these are the guys that perform uh, the worst relative to their uh, Woba cube values, the, the values just based on the, the quality of contact. And all these guys are uh, slower and a number of these guys, another factor is that they, they're shifted on aggressively. So the top three here uh, were shifted on a lot in addition to being slow. And also Victor Martinez and Matt uh, Carpenter were, were shifted on a lot. Uh, we also see here that the, the absolute value of the O minus I4 is bigger than what we get for the O minus I3. So the Tesseract model is capturing uh, more of the variance in every case uh, than just the uh, the cube measurement. So we're, we're getting value out of this uh, fourth dimension. Okay, so in summary, we've developed the Woba Tesseract, which combines uh, stack-cast batted ball and time-to-first measurements. It gives us an improved model for uh, Woba on contact, and there's a number of, of possible applications. Uh, we can optimize performance projections. We can use this to monitor batters over time. Uh, since we've taken the running speed to first um, out of the equation, this gives us a little bit uh, better opportunity to study uh, ballpark and shift effects. And we can also use this to improve defensive metrics since we have the time to first. So the, the same kind of thing uh, that MLB is doing with their outs above average. So uh, that's it. If um, we have time and the technology allows, I can answer questions.